Good evening. I'm Dega McDowell. And I'm Sean Duffy. Welcome to The Bottom Line. We begin with a Fox Business Alert. Moments away from now, the big guy, President Joe Biden, set to hold a big boy press conference. It's worth noting today was supposed to be the sentencing hearing for President Donald Trump. Instead, we're facing an historic leadership crisis in this country at the hands of Joe Biden and all the Democrats. So not only is the press conference rare, it comes at a time when his party is losing faith in him from lawmakers on the Hill to also major donors. So let's recap just this week. On Monday, Biden insisted he is staying in the race. Tuesday, the Cook political report moved six states into Trump's direction as the White House confirmed Biden saw a Parkinson's expert, though they still insist he doesn't actually have Parkinson's disease. Yesterday, Nancy Pelosi added doubt to his political future, saying, quote, we're all encouraging him to make that decision which Joe Biden already publicly has. George Clooney called on Biden to drop out, and three more Democrat lawmakers said he needs to drop out. That brings us to today. The curmudgeon-in-chief, or commander in chaos, whichever you like, was tied up attending the NATO summit. Meanwhile, his aides went to Capitol Hill meeting with Senate Democrats over their concerns about old Joe, who just confused Zelensky and Putin. Now I want to hand it over to the president of Ukraine, who has as much courage as he has determination. Ladies and gentlemen, President Putin. At least he didn't say Brezhnev, Sean. Oh, my gosh. And his press team was busy denying reports, including one from The New York Times that claims some Biden advisors are discussing how to convince him to step aside. They also reported the Biden campaign is quietly testing Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump. Regardless of what happens tonight, some are saying it is already too late for the old, old, old man. I, I, already, I already think he's toast. I, I, I think the Democrats are in full-on panic, and I view this as largely inevitable, that they're moving towards dumping him. And, and, and realize, they've, they've got a combination of two things. They've got, number one, the severe mental uh, diminution of the president due to old age. But they've got, secondly, a, a set of policies they can't defend, including, number one, their open borders, which are an absolute disaster. Our next guest has been fighting to get the recordings of Biden's interview with special counsel Robert Hur made public, a move that could have shown the American people his decline long ago if the Justice Department just hadn't blocked it. Let's bring in Congresswoman Anna Paulina Luna. She is a member of the House Oversight Committee. Congresswoman, terrific to see you. Today, your move to fine Attorney General Merrick Garland $10,000 per day did fail. But is there a chance you think, if the Democrats really want Joe Biden gone and quick, that this audio, this recording gets leaked? Well, you know, the fact is, is that not just my bill failed, an appropriations bill actually went down because we had an attendance issue. So I've actually okay. refiled and I'm going to be bring, bringing this vote back to the floor. Um, but I do think that even just seeing debate last night that the Democrats are not inclined to really fight for Joe Biden. They're only able to get five Democrats to fly back in to vote against this resolution. And even then, so it narrowly failed. So mm -hmm. I do think that they're in big hot water. I agree with Ted Cruz. I think he's toast. So Anna, uh, it was just this past February in March that the media tore Robert Hur apart for pointing out Biden's age issues, claiming it was exaggerated and called the report personal and painful jabs. The problem here is, had the Justice Department actually released this information, um, they might have saved the Democrat Party from this disaster they're now facing with Joe Biden, who can't actually uh, uh, put sentences together, can't call out world leaders correctly by name. Um, they could have saved Joe Biden and the Democrat Party. I mean, the fact is, is that over the last couple of weeks, I have absolutely witnessed a cover up that goes all the way from the House of Representatives to the White House in regards to not just covering for Joe Biden, but also covering for what Garland is doing, which is comparable to what happened with Watergate. So to be clear, I've still been pushing for those tapes. Democrats, I've even talked to some of the Democrats that are calling publicly for Joe Biden to step down, and they know for a fact that he is not cognitively there. So I want the American people to know that they know that he's not there. This is a national security issue. This is a... Uh, 
protecting the authority of the House issue, and yet we still have people that are trying to save Joe Biden. The question is why? What is Garland really hiding? Mm. So it is an issue of national security, and I look forward to bringing this vote back to the floor. Well, Congresswoman, it, it, just looking at these headlines about how her misled the country on Biden's memory. It's what Sean and I have been talking about. This just isn't about the Democrats and the Democrat Party misleading the American people and propping up Joe Biden and covering up for his rapid cognitive decline. This is also about donors and it is about the media lying front and back up and down at every turn to try and dismiss and silence anybody who saw in plain sight what was going on with this commander in chief. We found out from CNN's reporting, now they seem to care, that the last full cabinet meeting was October 2nd of last year and that all the cabinet members had to submit what they were going to talk about, and it was carefully choreographed. Biden's going to call on you, and here's what you're going to say to him. None of this came out because the media was in the bag for Joe Biden. Look, look, Sean, uh, what I will say is that right now what we are finding is that the Obama machine very much is still controlling the strings in the Joe Biden White House. And what they're realizing is Joe Biden is projected to lose. I'm already even hearing legislation that Joe Biden's trying to really tie President Trump's hands on uh, defunding what's happening in Ukraine. So they know that he's on his way out. This is a last minute attempt to keep him in. But look, I mean, just like you guys stated earlier, uh, he is toast. They are, there's no way that they're going to be able to bait and switch. And if they do, they're going to have a funding issue. So so I think that they know that they're going to lose this next election. Yeah, I think they do. And as Democrats try to make up their mind about Joe Biden, Republicans are taking action. Your committee, the House Oversight Committee, has subpoenaed White House aides to learn more about the president's decline. Here's what uh, Chairman James Comer had to say this morning on Mornings with Maria Watch. These three individuals I subpoenaed, uh, no-name people, uh, very behind-the-scenes uh, staffers, uh, have been leading the cover-up. They've been protecting Joe Biden. They've been limiting his interactions. They've been writing note cards saying, stand up, sit down, shake this person's hand, turn around and leave, head towards the exit. I mean, what it appears may have been happening is these three no-name staffers may have been running a shadow government. I think this will lead to more subpoenas. I think there's a, a whole uh, group of staffers inside the White House and within the vice president's office who have known about Joe Biden's condition for a long time and who have taken active steps to cover up the fact that he's not mentally fit to be president of the United States. That is a huge scandal. That is a huge cover up. So, Congressman, I, I love investigations. I used to be a prosecutor. Um, but this investigation appears to investigate something we already know. Of course, the White House was covering up Joe Biden's decline. We all know they were doing that. Is this investigation really about who was running the shadow government, who really was making the decisions, who was in charge? Look, we already know who that was, and that's you can basically tell based on the staff that Biden hired, which are all Obama holdovers. So I don't necessarily think that that needs to be the scope of oversight. But what I will say is that, you know, we have a weaponized government currently. We have people like Garland who are going after Republicans. We have people like Jack Smith who we need to be subpoenaed. I think we know that Joe Biden's on his way out, and that's evident. That's stuff that the Democrats are trying to squelch right now in the House. But if you guys could see the floor conversations, you would see that the Democrats are in really hot water. So it'll be interesting. Interesting to see what happens, especially over the next few weeks. Yes, it will. Yep. Anna Paulina Luna, Congresswoman, thank you so much for thank being you. here.